image. And so he said, okay, I'm going to send an image that is, that is correct, that is not marred and broken. And how could this be done save by the coming of the very image himself, our Savior, Jesus Christ? Human beings could not have done it, for they're only made after the image. Nor could angels have done it, for they're not the images of God. The word of God came in his own person because it was he alone, the image of the Father, who could recreate human beings made after the image. And I think that too is not only a picture of who Jesus is, but of his mission to make us, to, to <laughs> transform us back to the image and reflection of him that we were meant to be. Um, he also says this, some may ask, why did he not manifest himself by means of other and nobler parts of creation, such as sun or moon or stars or fire or air instead of mere man? The answer is this, the Lord did not come to make a display. He came to heal and to teach suffering people. For one who wanted to make a display, the thing would have been just to appear and dazzle the beholders. And the Lord's certainly capable of that. But for him who came to heal and to teach, the way was not merely to dwell here, but to put himself at the disposal of those who needed him. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Behold him. Then there is the man, Jesus. Um, I said Jesus reveals who God is, so what kind of a man was he? Uh, well, that's certainly not a topic that could uh, be started and finished in one sermon, even a really long one, and this isn't going to be one of those. You'll be glad to know. But there is a hymn that was sung in the ancient church, and we find at least a part of it in Philippians 2. It captures much of who Jesus was. Um, and Paul quotes it uh, as he is urging people of the church to uh, use him as their example. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I couldn't help as I read this to think of all the wrangling and all the screaming and all the fighting and all the millions if not billions of dollars spent in the last even year uh, or two years maybe to gain positions of earthly power. But Jesus who had all the power laid it down, made himself nothing, made himself a servant. Behold him, consider him, his character, and what, what it takes to be this person. For that's the person we are to emulate and to uh, seek to become like. He was not a man of ego. Behold the man. The title of this sermon, Behold the Lamb, is actually taken from the words of John the Baptist um, the second time that he uh, pointed out uh, when he reacted to Jesus. And he pointed Jesus out to his own disciples. I'm going to be reading um, just a couple of verses, John 1, 29 through 34. But just before that, the day before these events, 
The Pharisees had confronted John, uh, demanding to know who he was, uh, not in terms of his name, but in terms of the scripture. Are you, are you the promised Messiah? Or maybe are you the promised forerunner of the Messiah? He had identified himself with the prophet Isaiah's words, the voice of one who cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And then he told them of another who would come after him the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Uh, in uh, John 1, starting in verse 29, it says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be re revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. I kind of love that this uh, shows that even John had doubts at times. He said, I didn't know him. Well, of course he knew him, but he wasn't really sure at times. Is this really, is this really the one that God has sent? But the Holy Spirit bore witness to him that this man is the Son of God, that this is, uh, he says, I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. And God does the same work in our hearts. You don't have to be John the Baptist or anybody in the Bible to have the Holy Spirit at work in you to recognize who Jesus is and to recognize him not just as a religious figure or a real smart guy or a wonderful teacher, but as your Lord and your Savior. That is a work that the Holy Spirit does in us. Um, but when at this moment John recognizes not only who Jesus is, but that he is the one sent by God to take away the sins of the world. That's why he's called the Lamb of God. And we, you know, there's so many Christmas uh, cards and stuff that have people holding little fuzzy lambs, you know. Jesus, you know, God's little lamb. Um, and not being a farmer myself, you know, I kind of like the pictures of little fuzzy um, uh, pet lambs. But I know uh, as folks, you know, certainly some folks in our church raise them and know that they... Um, they're not just little fuzzy pets. Uh, and for John and for the people of Israel, a lamb was a sacrifice for sin. And every year, lambs would be sacrificed for the sins of the people. Until finally, the truly perfect Lamb of God, who was the Son of God, freely offered himself, his body and blood, for the ultimate sacrifice for sin. And that one didn't need to be repeated. Uh, the author, um, well, let's, uh, Hebrews 7, 27. Um, the author of Hebrews says, unlike other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once for all when he offered himself. That was mind-blowing to them, right? They were constantly offering sacrifices. Oh, new sin, new sacrifice. New but Jesus was offered once for all. The Lamb of God who didn't just cover the sins for a little bit, but took away our sins. He gave himself freely. Behold the Lamb of God. And the final picture is the risen Savior and the King of kings and Lord of lords. This, this lamb, this humble man, 
the Savior the, who sacrificed himself on a cross when he rose up became again the King of Kings, the Mighty One. Uh, Revelation chapter 5 verses 11 through 14 says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This humble man is also the one, if we saw his glory for a second, we couldn't keep our eyes open. The mighty one. Singer Michael Card wrote this, all we could ever imagine, could ever hope for, he is. He's the Prince of Peace whose first coming has already transformed society, but whose second coming will forever establish justice and righteousness. All this and infinitely more, alive in an impoverished baby in a barn. That is what Christmas means, to find in a place where you would least expect to find anything you want, to find everything you could ever want. This Christmas season, take time to behold the baby, God in flesh. Behold the man, the example of love and goodness and compassion toward the world, those the world despises, the Prince of Peace. Behold the Lamb of God who freely gave his life that we might have life. Behold the risen Savior and the King of Kings, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And that's when I start hearing the Hallelujah Chorus. Let's pray. Lord God, you are beyond our imagining. And I pray that we would, even if it's just in a few snatched moments here and there, driving, sitting at a traffic light, that we would take moments to behold you, to remember who you are, and to, to look full in your face and in the work that you have done and the love that you have for us and the person that you are and the mighty king that you are, knowing, Lord, that no matter what chaos we may be in, you are still ruler of all. And one day it will be brought to finality. And all that has been wrong will be made right. We give you thanks for that, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to close with um, two verses of what child is this? I also kind of wanted to, could we, after it's not on the thing, but after that, just do the chorus of, Oh, come, let us adore him. You can even just give us a, a note. You don't have to look it up. Never mind. Oh, she's so good. All right. If you want to stand, you can stand. Let's sing, What Child Is This? Shepherds go and angels.
sing as to to bring him on who made the song of Mary so bring him incense gold and myrrh compass and key to warn him the king of kings salvation brings that Just give us opening chord. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs> Joe. Joe. Thank you.